Hey everybody, real quick before the episode begins today, I just wanted to say thank you for the incredible welcome back. I know that a lot of you, my subscribers in particular, have been waiting a very long time for some new content from me, and I'm excited to finally deliver. We're going to be looking at a dom lock today, and I'll be seeing you weekly, and I'm very happy about that. Thanks again for the very warm welcome. Hey everybody, Skylar here, bringing you another week of locks from my collection. So today we're going to be looking at a dom cylinder. Now this is a dom with just a single row of pins, but it has some beautiful security pins going on inside of it, things that you've probably never seen before and might not see again. And over here with our key, it's actually solving one of the essential problems with dimple keys, and we'll show you exactly how it's doing that. This, I believe that I got off somebody on Lockpicking 101 several years ago. Thank you to whoever that was. And just a quick shout out to Snowy Boy. I don't remember if this was a Snowy Boy original, but that guy made the most incredible cutaway locks. So if he's still acting, operating, go find some of the work that he's done. It's beautiful. Okay, let's have a look at how this operates. The cuts in the key are particularly interesting because we have a couple on the side here. And what's very neat is that the DOM actually has these tracks that rise outside of the normal thickness of the key. Big problem with a lot of dimple locks is that because there's so little space to put your dimples in, you don't have a lot of variation between the pin stacks, and so a lot of them can be fairly easily raked with tools called matador picks. However, with the DOM, they've extended these ridges up above the thickness of the key, and that gives them a much wider range of pin differences. Okay, so having a look here, um, we have a nice straight line, and this is also going to be mirrored by our pins, which are actually much narrower than you would imagine. And I'll show you how they do that when we pop it open, but first let's just have a look at what's going on inside. So just like any normal pin tumbler lock, as the key is inserted, all of the pins are lifted up to the shear line and they can separate. So right off the bat, I like it just because of that cool key. A lot of people don't take the time to think through how subtle changes like that, just allowing for greater variation in the height differences between pins can greatly increase the security of the lock. So it just shows some very clever thinking and an interesting solution to the problem. Now, we're going to take this thing apart and have a look at everything inside of it, and uh, I hope you get as big a kick out of these security pins as I did when I looked at it the first time. Okay, of course I have my small corrugated pinning tray and our lock. I'm just going to pop the circlip off the back here, and I'm just going to use a plug from another lock as my plug follower. Now, the important thing, if ever you're doing this, is just make sure that you don't line the holes up with the upper pin chamber. So we're just going to offset it a little bit. But otherwise it works pretty beautifully. Okay, turn this offline. Pass this pup through. Almost there. There we go. Nice. So the first thing that we're going to have a look at is just our key pins. Hold our thumb over this as we remove this from the lock. Excellent. And we'll drop these in, keeping everybody in order. Two. So right away, hopefully you're realizing a couple of things. First, just that the tips of the pins are incredibly narrow. They ride only along this protrusion. They're not rounded like most pins that you would normally see, not at the tips at least. And the way that they accomplish that is by having a bit of a teardrop shape carved into the plug of the lock. So right along here, you'll see a little protrusion out each side, making for a slightly irregular circle. 
in those chambers, we have a small directional protrusion, just a little flag that keeps these all in the right position all of the time. And this way, they can stay oriented perfectly with that track and the key. Additionally, even on our key pins, we start to see some security features with this significant serration, almost wide enough to be considered a spool on the shortest of our key pins. So if this were lifted too high, it would easily get caught at the shear line. But as cool as the key pins are, let's look at probably the prettiest driver pins you'll ever see. All right, we'll carefully remove our other plug while keeping our thumb over the cylinder and just pop one out. And these are also oriented, so I am going to keep them in order. So there's our one. Usually you don't need to worry about this with driver pins, but in this case, I want to be real specific. There's two, and that's one of the really cool ones that we'll talk about in a second three, a second of those very cool ones. Unfortunately, they're not made anymore, or at least that's the word I've got. Four. And five. To make life a little easier on myself, I'm not gonna remove the springs, but just know that they are some of the longest springs in the business. Nothing else crazy happening with them though. Okay. There we go, set that aside. All right, so with our driver pins, we have a few interesting things going on. One, we just have these barrel-shaped guys that have a large cut along the bottom of them that pretty easily gets caught as you're applying tension in the shear line. Um, additionally, and don't quote me on this at the moment, but I think that some of these may have been intended for bump resistance but I'm not as sure about that. However, if we look inside, we will see a little steel insert, and this is to help prevent drilling attacks. So the drill would have a harder time getting through this, and because it's rounding, you also have the opportunity to potentially misalign and snap the drill bit. This will also tell us which direction our driver pins should be oriented. We'll also see these inside of our key pins, if we have another look at those little inserts throughout some of those also. Now, on to probably my favorite security pin ever. This is what some have called the donut ring cylinder. I'm gonna give it a little tap in this direction. You'll see that that ring has moved slightly. Now I'll give it a tap in this direction. It's moved in the other direction. Now I know that this is minute, so let me grab the key from another lock to hopefully demonstrate a little better the fact that this ring around here is free floating. Now, because I love this lock, I haven't actually attempted to pick it. But from what I understand about these donut rings, they provide just a very muddy sensation. Um, it's sort of a half spool, half serrated pin, and as a result, it really changes just the feeling of picking. Unfortunately, I've been told they're not produced anymore specifically because they were so expensive to produce. All right, just a quick look at my key to make sure my order is right. My highest peaks are over here, my shallowest pins. I'm good to go. I'm gonna get this put back together and then we will finish this off. Just have my last pin to slot back in here. Perfect. And our plug is set up with the correct pins. And let's make sure everything still works. Put our circlip back on before I cause myself any trouble. And the key. Beauty. Excellent. All right. So you can see why it's one of my favorite cutaways, I hope. Uh, and it's just a really cool lock with some beautiful pins. I'm also a big fan of the Dom lock company in general. They make some other cool locks like the Saturn, the Diamant. And unfortunately, they haven't entered the US market. 
I actually had the opportunity to speak to representatives of DOM a couple of years ago at the Essen Security Conference in Germany, and they basically said that they started entering the Japanese market, and they're probably not coming to North America anytime soon, but that was years ago now, so we can always hope. But how much do I like them, you ask? Well, if you ever see me at a conference, you can have a look. My belt buckle is actually a DOM key for the same type of lock, though a slightly different design with multiple rows of pins. Uh, we'll get a better shot of that for the outro. Thank you all for joining me once again. I'm going to get my belt back together, and I will see you all next week.